So I'm going to try to uh, engender in you kind of strategy, a mindset to think of when we're up against the uh, potential for a replacement, how to give our chances, how to give our, ourselves the biggest chances uh, for replacing them. So some, some caveats here when we're in the replacement side of this business. First of all, you don't ever replace existing coverage unless it actually benefits the client. So please, this is not a training to wholesale replace everything that you come across. This is a training to help guide you when the time is appropriate on how to persuade the client that making a switch in their existing policy is in their, is in their interest. So a couple of things here. I want to talk from a meta standpoint, from a, from a, a big standpoint. It, it cannot be overstated that the more obvious and simpler it is to show the difference in where they are and their inferior coverage to where they could be in a better policy, the simpler and easier that is to actually understand, the more likely your client's going to make the switch. So what do I mean by that? Let me explain. Um, it, it makes sense when your client is not covered, like say with a two-year waiting period policy, and then they could be covered with you. That is more likely than not, if you can explain the difference of that, and explain why the client should care, it's pretty easy to understand that they're going to replace the vast majority of the time. Okay? So what I mean by that explanation is that when the circumstances are obviously in your favor, you should be replacing it. If, if they are in your favor and you're not replacing it and you're trying, but the client relents to no logical explana explanation, there's probably something you're doing prior, not doing prior to that to build sufficient trust and rapport with the client, okay? So um, it's less about the, the tricks and the tips to kind of what words do you say to trick the client into replacing or anything. It should be pretty obvious that what they have is bad and what you can do for them is better, okay? So... Um, Here's how we get into the replacement conversation. So the conversation typically comes up about replacement when, when, when we're in stage two and we ask the client, so what are you doing right now for your existing life insurance? And they happen to say, well, I got some kind of policy. Great. So what I do at this point is to start asking questions, okay? Just basic questions. Enough to get them to the point where they're unclear about what they have. Again, the vast majority of our clients don't really know what they have. They have an idea about it, but an incomplete idea. And I wanna ask enough questions to get the client concerned and wondering, okay, is it this or is it that? Because that gives them motivation to do what I ultimately want them to do, which is go grab the policy and then let me review. So questions that I'll ask to warm them up to go getting the policy. Who's your company with? How much is the premium a month? How much coverage you got? Are you sure about that? Just to get them to think twice, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Because I can tell you, pro, pro tip here, most clients are way off on what they have. Maybe about two out of three people don't know what they've got. It's crazy. Um, uh, is it term or whole life insurance? Better yet, does this kind of plan that cancels or is it the kind of plan that lasts forever are you sure and then usually about this point i'll say well why don't you do this if i'm in person i'll say go grab the pot let's let's take a look at your policy i do free reviews as part of my service go grab your policy for me and then we'll take a look if I'm over the phone i'll say the same thing of course i don't have the same luxury as i do in person to thumb through it with ease but you can verbally go through the process i'm about to describe so I want them to go grab their policy. Notice that I ask for permission. Would you please go grab your policy? No. Go grab your policy. It's part of the service that I provide to help you. So I ask it matter of fact, without being, you know, permission based. And many times they just, they'll go voluntarily get it anyway. But that kind of go get it because I said so gives you that little bit of motivational edge, that assumptive edge that we like. Now, a couple of things when we're pulling up the policy. Number one, um, the most important part to look at 
is the first two or three pages after the front page, you get to like a summary page that tells you the amount of coverage they have, the type of coverage, and then the premium. Okay. So we want to be looking for that. And if you're in person, we want to be showing this to them. And it's like sitting side by side. If you're over the phone, you want to have them like, okay, turn to page two. Tell me what the top of the page says. Okay, where does it say premium? Where does it say coverage? What does it say, et cetera, right? So you're verbally walking them through it, okay? Sometimes on the second page, you'll get a um, kind of some language about if it's level term or level whole life or guaranteed acceptance. So, or you'll also get an indication if it's a smoker rate or non-smoker rate. More on this later, okay? We're just trying to fact find to see what they've got. Typically, in the third or fourth page, there's going to be some kind of description on how the policy covers. It's mandatory, and all of this is standardized in the, in the business. It's mandatory to show the client somewhere in the beginning front of the policy how the coverage works, okay? It's meaning, what does it cover in the first year, second year? And then it goes like to the fifth year, the 10th and 20th, and it will show cash values on these pages too. So what'll happen a lot of times is if it's a two-year wait period policy, it'll show that there's no coverage. It'll show our return of premium plus 110% or something like that. Then that's the indication of the client. Again, more on that in a minute that they should be concerned about. Um, also, if it's term, usually it'll show the termination date. Uh, you know, it'll show how the premiums are level for all these years and the coverage is level and then they'll either terminate or it'll show some enormous premium after the premium, the term period is up because sometimes these plans go up enormously in price and that's the indication that it isn't perfect, okay? Um, or it's not, it's not whole life. Now, so I'm, I'm fact finding all this. I'm not like stopping the train saying, we gotta get off this, that's a piece of junk, right? I'm just showing them, I'm letting their minds kind of realize what this is, but I'm not attacking the plan. So, so, okay, so your premium is this. Does that sound right? Your coverage is this. Does that sound right? Yeah. Sometimes I, say, I thought I had more than that. Okay, did you know this was a $20,000 accidental plan only? And it's only $10,000 if you die naturally? No, I didn't. Okay, well, let's, let's keep that in mind. So I'm, I'm planting these seeds of like doubt and mystery and concern, and I'm getting them kind of concerned, but I'm not, again, attack. I'm not ready to a full frontal attack here, right? So at that point, the next stage is to flip to the back of the policy, all right? Um, in every policy, there is a copy of the application that was completed, okay? It's, again, mandatory requirement. Um, even with e-apps, you should have the copy of the app in the back. And the reason that's important is because it, it, it shows the client what the agent input for all of their processes, right? It shows the client, okay, I told the agent this, but did he actually list it as a no or a yes, right? So I told the client agent, I smoke like a train. Um, you know, I smoke two packs a day, but why am, is it listed here so, as non-smoker, right? So on the application copy, I'll show them, I'll say, hey, you remember how you told me you smoke like two packs a day? What does that say right there? Read it to me. And then, oh, it has me listed as a non-smoker. So now they're getting concerned and worried. Like, what's what does this guy do to me, right? Um, and again, you can do this with your client over the phone, the same exact way I'm talking about. So turn to the back where you see like a copy of the application. It's like a little harder, but you see where it says smoker rate on there. What does it say? Yes or no? No. Oh, wow. I thought you were a smoker. You're a smoker, right? Yeah. So this is the kind of process we're doing here. And again, from a big picture standpoint, what I'm trying to do here, a lot of replacements don't just occur because you can save the client 10 bucks. That's like the cherry on top. A lot of replacements occur because the client recognizes they don't trust the person they thought they could trust, okay? They thought they could trust the agent that took the policy out on them, but then we've given them evidence, right? And this is the beauty of this process. We've given them evidence to show that this person is not who they say they are. 
They didn't do what they promised to do. And the client arrives at this own conclusion for themselves that I told this man one thing and he, boy, he did totally something different. And then it's furthering our explanation of what will happen, God forbid, if they die early, that seals the deal for our client to switch their plans over. Does that make sense, guys? So we're walking through this policy, okay? We're walking through this process of getting, getting the, the details of what this thing does, okay? Sometimes after I've collected this information, I'll essentially tease what's to come, okay? Um, those of y'all who are getting all my spam mail recently about the, uh, that uh, AAP, agent autopilot, a lot of people are like, just tell me what it is, how it works. Now, the reason we do this to our main list is because it gets people in excitement. It gets them anticipating what's to come. It gets them really interested because I'm not I'm teasing it. I'm not telling you exactly all the details, right? So it's an old trick from a sales standpoint to get somebody concerned and worried, but to not show them the solution right away, to draw them in that much more. It's a, almost so much of a takeaway as it is just a way to get the attention necessary to draw people through the entirety of it. It's the same way what we're doing here in the replacement process. So at this point, I'll say, hey, look, you know, you're seeing this thing as 20,000 in coverage. You, the, the agent told you it's 20,000, right? But it says, you tell me if I'm wrong, that that's 10,000 in natural death coverage only. How does that make you feel? Terrible. The guy lied to me, you know? Um, uh, you told the guy you smoked two packs a day. Well, and he put you down as a non-smoker, right? That's what we saw. Well, how do you think about that? What do you think about that? Do you know what the consequences are? Right. Um, so, so these are the things that I'll start to ask them and then I'll tease them and say, well, we're going to cover this in a minute. Like the, there's some real problems with your policy here and I'm going to get to it in a little bit. But the reason I'd explain this to you is I want to show you what you've got versus what you were promised that you had, because at the end of the day, insurance is all about promises and guarantees, right? You want peace of mind. We got to ask yourself, do you have even any peace of mind with what you got here? Are you the least bit worried that what the agent said he did is completely different? And you've seen it in your, with your own eyes. So that gets them in the state of panic. And they're that much more engaged with you because what will happen is you go into state, you're going to still have to pre-qualify them. You're still going to have to go through the process. But then when you get to the end, the stage three, you start to reveal, hey, you know, this is whole life insurance. And the reason that the way this is different than yours is because, A, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's whole life. It never goes up, never cancels due to age or health, et cetera. It's full first day coverage. Depends on the circumstances of how I'll phrase it. But like, let's say if it's accidental death coverage, I'll say, hey, look, you know, these plans sound great, but the problem is you got to die by accident. And statistically, that just doesn't happen with seniors. Not only do you have to die by accident, but you have to die within the first 90 days. There's a lot of health care that's out there that will extend the length of your life, maybe not the quality. But in many cases, with this, um, this large amount of coverage that you were told you've got is not what it's going to pan out to be. So my advice to you, my recommendation is instead of getting the accidental coverage, put the savings towards more natural death coverage, because we know you're going to die by some, some account. And with the coverage, it will be for natural or accidental. Well, most likely, of course, nat natural. Most people don't buy an, die by accident at your age. So we want to tap out the most that we can. Does that make sense, right? Because we've talked about earlier the inflation going up, right? And you need to have more than just 10,000. You know, you're 55. You should try to have 15 or 20 at least. So this is me trying to show them the reality of what they have versus what they could get. And, and again, trying to tie it all back to, again, you know, hey, look, at the end of the day, you know, this is about trust. This is about promises. It's about peace of mind. It's not just a peace of mind that you've got coverage, but that your coverage will actually do what it's entailed to do, right?